Charlotte, I'm nervous. I'll tell you about it when I get on stage. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. It's Gertie Mac, and let's jump right into Corey Holcomb speaking on Tasha K and Jess Hilarious, but more so Tasha K than anything. So now a little backstory. Tasha K and Cor Corey Holcomb had like a little back and forth going on. So I was a couple months ago or last year. She said some things about him, and I want to say about him and his ex-wife or baby mama. And then, you know, of course, he responded on his podcast. Now, things kind of simmer down a little bit, but I guess Corey's keeping that same energy. Now, when it comes to Jess Hilarious, he simply just be saying basically that Jess Hilarious is not funny. So he calls her less hilarious. Now, there have been people that say they went to her shows, her stand-up, and she is not that funny. And when it boils down to it, some comedians are funny in movies, some comedians are funny in stand-up, and some comedians are funny with internet skits. And this is kind of what he's talking about. Now, um, Tasha K is currently on tour where she is doing like comedy, um, gossip, and then, you know, her signature stuff, wine. And so she is doing comedy clubs on this tour. You know, you kind of see her live shows where she does on um, um, what she does on YouTube. But now she is taking on the road, and she has been selling out, so it's been working for her. But now, with Corey Hogan on this segment of the Fifty One Fifty Show, he was speaking on how some of these people that are like popular internet comedians or just you know like Tasha K, you know, she kind of does gossip and stuff like that, but she's doing these comedy tours. Corey Hogan basically saying that this kind of stuff right here is kind of messing up the comedy clubs. And then it gets to a point now where improv and comedy clubs, when it used to be about having talented comedians, they're now kind of accepting anyone to book these venues when it wasn't like that at first. And he's just saying that basically after the pandemic, this is when you started to see things change because now the comedy venues are just bringing people that are popular but they're not really bringing real comedians. Y'all check out what he had to say. Yeah. They are selling these clubs now. Heck yeah. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's scary, dude. Has it, listen, I would be mad if I went to a comedy club, paid for parking, because that's the first thing you do. Oh. As soon as you get there, you got to pay so, for parking somewhere. Okay. When you walk in the door, the host want a tip. Right. <laughs> What if the comic ain't shit? Yep. Well, and you done paid for the food. You have. What to. if the comic ain't shit? It's a minimum. That's Let's what Larry. Have. I hate this business has become to the point where the clubs try to book popular people instead of talented people. Mm -hmm. But now. The way the world and climate has changed, popular people are booked. Popular people. Because the internet <laughs> is funny than a mother. Internet. You got mothers. They do one-nighters at these clubs. What's that have a name? Um, um, Tasha K. we was at war with. I was at war with. Bitch does one-nighters at the clubs. What is she, <laughs> what is she going to say? Let's call Corey, baby mama, while I'm up here. <laughs> what the fuck is she going to do? She ain't got no jokes. But they at comedy clubs. And this is what's so the public doesn't take responsibility. That's what we was talking about earlier. Yeah. You went to see her. And don't be mad at the club because she didn't have no jokes. She went up there to bullshit you and try to last 45 minutes before they start booing. I'm just saying, I ain't talk about only Tasha K or Less Hilarious. It's a lot of male comics that flat out are not ready to be presented to you in a way where you're paying 20 plus dollars for a ticket. Now, when it comes to what he is saying in reference to Tasha K, I'm going to say this. I don't necessarily think Tasha K is trying to be a stand up comedian. I think she is just throwing in some jokes, a little laughter, because 
People found her funny just when she is talking on her lives and what she does on there. I think if you look at the audience and look at um, some of her shows that she's been doing, like I said, they've been selling out. So you got to give her credit for that. So it's mostly women. You got to realize that Tasha K covers a lot of the gossip, the tea, the, the, the new stuff with reality TV shows and celebs, entertainment. And a lot of times people who, those podcasters and those bloggers who does that, they don't really have an avenue to go do live shows. At least they kind of set some of themselves. Now, the reason why she's doing comedy shows, I don't know. Maybe because they are smaller venues and for that type of connection, you know, a smaller venue that's kind of close and compact might be better. Of course, you know, for the kind of like they had those intimate conversations. So I think mostly for her, she is just trying to drive down her own lane of doing like the gossip, you know, kind of like setup going on the road. Kind of no difference than like uh, um, syndicated radio shows when they go during football season, they be live and stuff like this from a HBCU college or whatever, Rick and Smiley Born Show, all those kind of places. They be live at a venue where they're just doing a radio show live. Now, Tasha K ain't an internet comedian, so she don't really does the skits. But now, I get what he's saying about the ones who are kind of like the internet comedians. I have been to a, a, a comedy show before and, and seen an internet comedian. thing about that is, sometimes they're not that funny. It was down in Houston, Texas. And not going to say his name, but to me, it wasn't that funny. To me, it wasn't that funny. And sometimes it's like that. They may be funny on the internet doing skits, but then that don't mean that you are funny when you jump on stage and try to tell jokes for about an hour. Now, there is a different path in that. And so I get what he's saying about these comedy clubs are booking people that are popular. These, a lot of these comedians are popular. I mean, you got Lavelle, Crawford, and stuff like that. These are vets. But you have internet comedians who are more popular than a Lavelle Crawford. You know what I'm saying? So I get what he's trying to say, but since the pandemic, not just come to clubs, all businesses are trying to find any way they can survive and they have to maneuver and pivot and figure out other ways to bring in income. So these improvs probably used to only book just straight up comedians, but now they're starting to open the floodgates up to start to welcome a new audience and crowd into their venues so they can pay the bills. And that's what I think this is all about. Shout out to the 5150 show, Corey Holcomb, Darlene, Craig. Y'all go click the links and watch their uh, um, podcast. But don't y'all forget to subscribe to the channel, like, and share this video. Holla.